Hi everyone, this is going to be a um, more accurate test now to determine the efficiency of the uh, off-the-shelf motor with its uh, standard, with its circuit that came with it from the manufacturer and uh, this uh, modified version here with its own uh, circuit. And uh, you're going to just see the uh, difference in efficiency when we attach a load. So um, the previous video I had just quickly attach this alternator to this one here which is the modified version and now today uh, these are the real official tests here and very going to be very accurate there's no there's not going to be any guessing uh, so here uh, the alternator is hooked up to it and it's operating and unfortunately that's the speed that it operates uh, when it uh, idles and uh, that's all I can do at this time. I don't have the ability to uh, increase the RPM. But that's fine, we can do the same thing with this here and uh, compare it, for, you know, apples to apples. Uh, no need to uh, get uh, too complicated about this. So um, basically here we are gonna use a one ohm uh, precision uh, resistor. That is a, uh, sorry, I think it's upside down, yeah. That is a uh, 1 ohm, 1% 1 uh, resistor. You can see it there. So that's uh, obviously going to give us a very uh, accurate reading. And here's my uh, scope probes across it. And we're going to read the uh, scope uh, true RMS uh, value here of the uh, load and give you the uh, amount of watts it, it delivers and then we're going to have the accurate calculation here of the watts this uh, also uh, consumes when the load is attached. Now to do that, what I did is I went directly uh, in the uh, circuit itself here. Uh, that is the full wave bridge rectifier location here. So I've used my own uh, pie filter here uh, for uh, doing accurate measurements and uh, what this is is a capacitor bank uh, filter system that uh, when you have pulse motors or circuits that are turning on and off this will give you a perfectly linear and correct reading okay so on this side we've got the voltage and on this side here we've got uh, it's basically voltage across a you know a precise resistor that's a point uh, one ohm uh, resistor and that is measuring the voltage across that resistor and that voltage comes exactly to uh, milliamps, basically. So that's 131 milliamps that it's uh, averaging right there. So um, the circuit is operating. It's just uh, not loaded at this time. And I've already done the math, the test, because you know we're uh, <laughs> needing to save a little bit of time here. So on the no-load situation, that motor is turning at 730 RPM and the voltage uh, has small variations but at that time it's 166.8 at 131 uh, milliamps equals uh, 21.85 watts so that motor needs 21.85 watts to turn and turn this uh, alternator here uh, under no load condition and uh, there you go you can see the uh, current and voltage and now I'm going to attach the load it is now on load and now the uh, current has changed and it is a hundred and about 176 uh, milliamps at 166.5 uh, uh, volts and that's what I had so on load uh, the dr RPM drops a little bit uh, basically that uh, circuit keeps the RPM uh, tries to keep the RPM up the same so it just adds more uh, current so it's at 725 RPM and it was at 166.4 at 176 milliamps. So uh, 29.9 uh, watts is uh, the increase for adding that load. And the difference between the two, no load and on load, is this here, 7.44 watts. Okay, so now we go to our scope and we look at our uh, measurement and that what you see there in green is the uh, beautiful sine wave that comes out of that uh, alternator and uh, the scope uh, can easily <laughs> come up with a very accurate uh, result of that sine wave and there it is 
So it's 1.75 volts across that precision 1 ohm uh, resistor. So basically uh, 1.75 volts across that resistor is right here, comes to exactly 3 watts. So now we have a baseline efficiency uh, test to compare the uh, manufacturer off-the-shelf motor and the modified motor. So now the next thing is I'm going to set up the modified motor at the uh, same RPM range and we're going to uh, hopefully deliver the uh, same amount of uh, watts on that one as well and we're going to see its uh, differences. So this guy needed 7.44 watts to deliver the 3 watts and we're going to see if this one is any better. Now mind you that is not like again what I'm saying I'm just checking its efficiency before I do the next stage mod modification which is actually now uh, going to be adding a second assist motor that will be assisting the drive shaft okay, in tandem together by utilizing the flyback. The flyback is the collapsing feel of the coils here because they're being switched on and off and at the off time we're collecting that inductive kickback and at this time it's just going into batteries and um, we're gonna we're actually going to be using instead of going to batteries that'll be going to the assist motor directly so that is the final plan and uh, that will be uh, in some uh, videos to come so we've already established now our baseline and off-the-shelf motor uh, its efficiency uh, and now we're going to just move to this establish its efficiency as is so that our next step when we add that uh, assist motor, we're going to be able to see if the assist motor is even boosting the efficiency even more and we're going to do the identical test with that uh, and that will determine if we're going in the right, right direction with this. So now I'm going to move over the alternator to this side and do the same test there. We're going to see if we're any more efficient than that. Um, maybe, maybe not, I don't know. We're going to do that and we'll find out. Okay, so here is the uh, modified motor hooked up uh, to the alternator and first thing we'll do is take a RPM reading and you see that it's exactly at uh, 730 RPM. So that is the same RPM as our stock motor to start with under no load condition. Our resistor is open right now and I'm using the uh, same meters and that is coming through uh, and we're, we can see here uh, 10.41 volts at uh, 576 milliamps that's what the uh, motor is utilizing uh, and if we look at our uh, math at uh, 730 rpm 10.42 volts there's small variations in the voltage at 0.576 is exactly 6 watts Right now we are turning this alternator with exactly 6 watts input and what I've done is to be able to calculate the power uh, I'm using only one phase out of this motor. So the other motor was actually using three phases. Uh, this one here I'm just using one phase because you cannot, it's too complex to calculate all the power of three phases in this configuration because it is um, <coughs> you'd have to have an isolation for each phase and I'd have to have separate meters it's just too complicated so this is actually a, a hindrance uh, as a matter of fact because we don't have all three phases to equally distribute the torque so possibly with the three phases this may be even a little bit more efficient so the other motor has a little bit more advantage as far as uh, having all three phases to work but anyways, I'm fine with this. Uh, this is this is fair, and uh, this is what the situation is here. Now, the other thing that we uh, need to take in consideration is this motor here has a flyback uh, recovery. So when the coils are off, the flyback is uh, being recovered. And what I have here is a uh, 10 microfarad capacitor that the flyback is going uh, across at every uh, off time and then I have a resistor here that I just adjust it's a potentiometer resistor and um, that is just so that basically I'll show you what happens on the scope shot here I'll expand 
This is the uh, capacitive discharge going to charge the 10 microfarad capacitor and it, it reaches a certain voltage and from there we can calculate uh, its peak voltage and basically the resistor just that potentiometer resistor discharges it back down to zero before the next uh, flyback uh, recovery going. So with that you can calculate an exact joule value and based on the frequency. So now I'll just give more samples here so that we can get some better data. So you're seeing here that uh, we're at 82.4 volts at peak to peak and our frequency is at uh, 48.8 Hertz. So with that I can calculate how many watts is being recovered. So now the next test is basically putting the uh, resistor on load but unfortunately I'm going to have to just pause the camera because I have to retune the circuit to maintain that RPM because there's going to, you know, this uh, circuit here just keeps the current the same all at the same time. We have to increase the current so that the RPM is maintained. That will follow the same kind of uh, uh, thing that's going on in the stock motor. The, the current gets increased so we're going to have a very fair comparable test. Uh, there won't be any kind of uh, possibility of uh, a different kind of scenario. This is uh, apples for apples. So I'll just pause the camera and I'll attach the load, recalibrate, and then we'll calculate our uh, new uh, power uh, from that point on. Okay, here is the motor now attached to the uh, 1 ohm load, the alternator, and uh, I got as close as I could to the uh, other RPM. So pretty well, 725 RPM was what we had for the other motor. And if we look uh, on our resistor here, we've got uh, the same sine wave and pretty well uh, 1.75 uh, volts there. It's just fluctuating a little bit, but there it is. And there is our flyback uh, on the uh, 10 microfarad capacitor. So we're at 136 uh, volt uh, peak to peak because it's under a load now and uh, our frequency is 48.4 uh, 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 hertz. Just little variances uh, from my calculations in this so don't uh, get too uh, anal about it. 19.32 uh, uh, volts uh, at uh, 863 or uh, milliamps. So uh, if we now come and uh, do our math, which I've already done, uh, so that we can get this video uh, done quickly enough, um, there we have the uh, values here. So our first uh, no load situation on the modified motor, this is what we were our build, uh, operated at, which comes to 6 watts, but we had a recovery uh, on the flyback so uh, 84, 82.4 volts on the 10 UF microfarad capacitor is uh, 0.033 whatever joule, joules uh, times the frequency. It was a little higher at that time because the uh, RPM is 730. So we had 1.66 uh, watts on the recovery. So we deduct that 1.66 watts and we were able to make that motor turn at uh, 730 RPMs for 4.34 uh, watts. So the difference from the uh, stock motor to do the same thing, uh, unfortunately their circuit is very uh, inefficient. Uh, I can tell you right away, I know it's burning 10 watts just uselessly. Um, it's, uh, it required actually 21.85 watts to turn the same thing at 730 uh, RPM. So even if we deduct uh, 10 uh, watts off of that, uh, we're still at 11.85, uh, which, you know, uh, here we're able to actually uh, do it for actually 6 watts less our recovery, uh, 1.66 watts from our flyback, which is 4.34 watts. So we're still like really, really ahead and keep in mind this is just using even one single phase here they had the three phases uh, 
uh, advantage of just continuous torque. Then uh, we put it on load and they uh, had to increase the voltage and obviously the current uh, increases with that as well uh, because we're now on load. So it took a 16.64 watts uh, but because we are now pushing more current we're also getting more flyback uh, out uh, in that condition. So basically uh, we have 4.49 uh, watts on the flyback on the re recovery and the flyback is calculated from what we already saw in the scope 136 uh, volts okay and if we go here and we look at that we're at 136 uh, volts and the frequency is 48.6 uh, Hertz so there is 136 volts uh, on their 10 UF cap gives you uh, 0 0.09 whatever uh, joules times the 48.6 that's how we came up to our 4.49 which we deduct from the uh, situation here where we're on load and basically on load we only use 12.15 uh, watts compared to here 29.29 watts okay but here the difference between its uh, very inefficient uh, power uh, less the, uh, the difference than putting it on load is 7.44 watts and we want to see that we get in that range so basically what we need to do is we need to take 12.15 watts deduct that 4.34 uh, watts and we should be close to that range and here is the math on that 12.15 watts and we deduct that's on load and this is offload so our difference is 7.81 watts so we're very very close to the same thing and keep in mind we have just one phase operating here I'm sure if we had three phases operating we pretty well have the identical math okay but the whole point of all this here is that we are doing uh, that load for 12.15 watts and here it takes 29.29 watts so obviously we're right away starting at a more efficient uh, uh, position to deliver our uh, 1.75 volts on a 1 ohm load, uh, basically 3 watts, the same condition as what we did up here on the stock motor. So uh, there is all the results and um, if anybody who uh, feels that this is not a correct uh, load test, then please uh, Go ahead and uh, post your uh, uh, opinions uh, either on the YouTube or go to the public forum topic where the, uh, that link is available down uh, at the bottom at, under the uh, video, uh, under abouts, so you can get a link to the uh, forum topic where this is being discussed at. But you'd have to be a member there or you can register to become a member if you want to participate in this. So the uh, next test from there, I would say now, is to uh, hook up the uh, second assist motor and now put that uh, recovery uh, power here, our 1.66 watts and or 4.49 watts under load, and assist the rotor. And uh, I'm thinking that maybe it might be more beneficial to assist the rotor than to try to utilize uh, to collect that flyback. I'm thinking put it right back into the uh, motor here because what happens is the more load you put the more uh, flyback comes but the more flyback that comes the more it makes that assist motor strong and the more it keeps the shaft turning at the same rate. So it would be a motor that would have much less uh, reduction in RPM or uh, increase in current by a load and if we can exceed uh, the best motors on the market are somewhere around 95 percent efficient um, uh, just by uh, adding that uh, flyback maybe uh, you know we could have something that will go beyond that point I don't know we will see and uh, thanks for your interest Bye now.